a sphere of radius 2.1 mm falls with terminal or constant velocity through a liquid as shown in figure 1.1. So as previously mentioned in various uh, times or instances, I've already said that this is Cambridge or CIE's favorite thing to ask in AS. They like to ask you the idea of uh, changing drag force and terminal velocity. Okay, so this uh, sphere is already at terminal velocity. Whenever there's constant velocity, we know that acceleration is zero. So the net or the resultant force is zero. All right, let's continue the question. We are given some information about the sphere and it says that there are three forces acting on the moving sphere. Okay, three forces. The weight of the sphere is 7.2 times 10 to the power negative 4 Newton. The up thrust is 4.8 times 10 to the power negative 4. And the viscous force acting on the sphere is given by this equation. So if I were to sketch out the sphere at the side and label all the forces, there will be weight Let's say this is W. Okay, there's up thrust. So maybe this is up thrust. So F prefix up. And uh, the viscous force FV. So if we are falling down at constant speed, right? Let's say your ball is going down in this direction. Right, so the drag force will oppose motion. So you are falling down. To oppose you from going down, drag force will be acting upwards. So this is FV. Viscous drag. Drag is also known as resistance. So please know the different names of this uh, force. Drag force, resistive forces, etc. So you're given this equation. Okay? So we can just use this. And it says here that um, you can calculate this drag force using the equation KRV. Part A, determine the SI base units of K. So if you want to find the SI base unit of K, step one, I would suggest to rearrange the physical quantities, okay? So this FV is equal to KRV. I'm going to rearrange this. So K will be equal to FV over R. All right? And when we think about SI base units, this SI base unit there are only that few, lah. okay? So for example, like kilogram, there's only that five SI base unit in your syllabus seven, if you are stretching it, but then normally it's about five. So you could say taking units of K, this will be force is Newton over R is radius. So the unit is Newton and V is velocity, so meter per second. Is this your final answer? No. Is this SI unit? Yes. Is it SI base unit? No. This is not SI base. So hence, we need to convert F or Newton. So if I think about this, the SI base units, if you think of Newton, Newton, you know, F is equal to MA, so Newton is kg ms negative 2. So this one will be kg ms negative 2 divided by m bracket ms negative 1. So I guess we can cancel off the m, and then now what we have left is kg meter negative 1, s negative 2 over s negative 1 is s negative 3. Kg m negative 1 s negative 3. Okay, so this kind of question about base SI unit is uh, yeah, S negative 1. And hang on, it's negative 2 divide by negative 1. So minus negative 1. Ah. So this is Kg m negative 1 s 2 plus 1. So negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1. All right, so make sure you double check, okay? And also, what we are looking for is some basic substitution. So the idea of you showing this step is one mark. This is A1. And if you substitute this and meter per second, it's already C1. Actually, no, the C1 is here. 
C1 is when there is an idea that Newton, this value here, Newton is equal to kg ms negative 2. This one is C1. So how you write your uh, steps is up to you. But just remember that your 5 SI base unit is meter, kg, second, ampere, and Kelvin K. Only all of these five. Nothing else besides mole and candela. So these are the five. Newton is not a base SI unit. Okay. So we will score this one mark if we actually find the SI unit okay, from your working. So make sure that we can tell that, hey, you have substituted Newton with kg ms negative 2. That's your first mark. Okay. So that's your answer. A1 is here. Right, let's move on to the second part. Use the value of the uptrust acting on the sphere to calculate the density of the liquid. So uptrust is equal to rho Vg. Okay, rho is the density of the liquid. V is the volume of the liquid displaced, which also coincidentally happened to be the volume of the sphere. And G is our good old 9.81. So let us go gather some information. I have up trust uh, 4.8 times 10 to the power of negative 4. I'll put this here. 4.8 times 10 to the power of negative 4. We are looking for density. Volume is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. Yes, I hope you know this. 4 over 3 pi r cubed. Miss, if I don't know the volume of a sphere, am I? Yeah, quite, quite, quite GG. Please know the volume of basic shapes like sphere and area of a circle, right? So this volume of sphere, of sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cube. We have radius though. Yes, we do. You see this radius here is 2.1, but we are going to need to convert this 2.1 to millimeter, from millimeter to meter. So 2.1 times 10 to the power of negative 2. This is your r. We're going to put that in. 2.1 times 10 to the power of minus 3. Okay, so we have V substituted, and finally we need G, which is 9.81. Right. So from here, it's just a calculation. And because they are giving me three marks, right? If I'm familiar with the mark scheme, which uh, depending on how prepared you are for the exam, I'm guessing that there is one mark for me if I calculate the volume of the sphere. And to ease the examiner's eye, I will calculate that out first. But it's really up to you. Or maybe you don't want to. Let's try it if we don't. So I'm going to press my calculator. 4.8 times 10 power 4 divided by 4 over 2 divided by pi. You just dump everything one side. There's a cube that is missing. Let me remedy this. So, power 3. Pi R cube. Okay, so 2.1. E minus 2 to the power of 3 divide by 9.8 just throw everything the other side you find density this right 4.94 divide by 4 over 3 pi divide by pi power of 3 divide by oh where's my 9 9.81 it's a bit hard to press a calculator using my mouse but this answer makes way more sense. One, two, six, one. So using water as a guideline, water's density is about 1,000. So this is one, two, six, one, acceptable. And now we are at the issue of how many SF should I write my answer? Question didn't specify, and all the values given is two SF, right? This is two SF. This is two SF, the data given in the question. So this one, you can also write two SF. So it's perfectly acceptable to write 1200. Zero, zero. You can also uh, write this, I guess, as 1300. Zero, zero. I mean, 
it's up to you. So sorry, not one two zero zero, one three zero zero. So yeah, two p.m. green. So rounding this is one three zero zero, two SF. Three marks. All right, the first mark is when you substitute or you find volume. So finding volume correctly, either I see this working, this is your C1, or you look for volume, which is 3.88 times 10 to the power of negative 8 meter cube. So in this case, right, you have to use 3SF because this is intermediate calculation. Meaning it's not your final answer within the question section. So we round to 3SF instead of 2. Not 2. Okay. So at the end of the day, this is 3.88 or I see you using volume of sphere, you will get one mark. And then if we... If you substitute the other stuff correctly, meaning your up trust is 4.8, and then this is 9.81, or this other substitution is another C1 mark. And leading to your final answer, written into the appropriate SF is A1. Never use your G as 10 now. G is not 10 in physics. G in maths in physics, but 9.81 is what we use. So G is 9.81 in physics. Okay, in your maths paper, G is 10 maths. Please know what paper you are doing. Okay. Don't confuse. All right, so that's part B. It's pretty straightforward. Just make sure you do carefully and don't make mistake. Lah. All right, substitute the, the numbers here. You may not even need to remember the equation because this equation is given in this part. See? Up trust is this equation. We can use it. So it's a matter of seeing whether you know how to substitute the appropriate values and put it inside. Okay? Bonus. So good job if you get this part right. Part C. On the sphere of figure 1.1, draw three arrows to show the direction of the weight W up trust U and viscous FV. Label W, U and FV. And determine the magnitude of the terminal velocity of the sphere. So I guess I'm going to go back there and draw on the diagram. So this is my diagram. Right? I sort of already drew it on the side, so I'm just going to copy it over here. We just need a arrow pointing downwards, W. Okay. And then we have up trust U. And we have, uh, what's the thing? viscous force FV. Right? Um, the length of the arrow doesn't matter. The main purpose of the arrow is to indicate a direction. But if you want to be a bit accurate, the upward force and the downward force have to be balanced. Okay? So I'm going to recycle this drawing down here. Because in part 2, you are asked to determine the magnitude of the constant velocity. So we have drag, we have up thrust here, FV and MG. So at terminal velocity, net force is equal to zero, which means up thrust plus FV is equal to MG. Wait, anyway, they didn't say MG, right? They say W. Okay, I use W. So we know up trust, we can copy from the question. 4.8 times 10 power negative 4. We know the weight. Also can copy from the question. Where's the weight? Ah, wait, 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 wait. ah here. 7.2 times 10 to the power negative 4. Let's put that in. What else do we have? We want to find the terminal velocity V. But we have an equation for FV, right? There, here. FV is KRV. Okay. K radius velocity. So hopefully from here you can tell that we are looking for 
KRV. Okay. All right, let's, uh, I guess, let's try to find FV first. From here, FV is W minus U. 7.2 times 10 to the power negative 4 uh, minus 4.8 times 10 to the power negative 4. So this is 2.4 times 10 to the power negative 4. First point. Second step. We know that FV can be calculated using the equation KRV. Okay, but do we know K? Because FV, I'm going to draw a box around the values that I copied from the top. Okay? They are not part of my equation. Huh? This is part of my solution. This is just listing down the data because they are quite far away. Do we have K? Hmm. Do we have k? Got here. The value of k in SI units is 70. Teacher, what's the SI unit for k? Nah, you calculated already, ma. Kg m negative 1, s negative 1, or Newton m negative 2, s power 1. Okay, so k is 17. I'm just going to add that to my list k equals 70. So we can substitute here. 2.4 times 10 to the power of negative 4 is equal to 17. We have the radius 2.1 mm, so 2.1 times 10 to the power of negative 3 v. So we'll pull out our calculator and divide these two values. Let me do that here very quickly. Uh, 2.4 times 10 to the power of negative 4 divided by 17. Divided by 2.1 times 10 to the power negative 3. This will give me okay, 6.72 times 10 to the power negative 3. And as usual, I'll write my answers in 2SF. 6.7 times 10 to the power negative 3 meter per second. All right. So this kind of calculation, right, uh, is very standard. As long as you follow the lead of the question, it should be fairly easy to do. So if you manage to find FV using W minus U, see, they try to guide you also. Ma. If you label these three correct direction, you get one mark already. This is your one mark. But make sure you label on the diagram on top. Ah. Don't draw this one here. Draw this here. This one is your B1. Okay? And then once you label the diagram, you know that it's terminal velocity, so the upward force must be equal to the downward force. And from here, if you manage to find your 2.4 times 10 to the power negative 4, this is C1. And substituting into the equation leading to the answer is A1. And once again, since everybody is 2SF, we also follow law, 2SF. All the data given is 2SF. That's it for question one.